So, so good morning, everybody, uh, everybody who is uh, connected by now. Uh, also, good morning to the people over the webcast connection. Uh, we are very pleased to uh, present today the first lecture of the Quantum Technology Initiative uh, lecture, lectures part of the education and training program. Before I give the word to Michele Visky and Giovanni uh, Di Bartolomeo, who are with us, they are PhD students at the QMTS group at Trieste. Um, let, let me offer you some framing about this series. I mean, the, the first intention is that within the CERN Quantum Technology Initiative, most of the activities uh, have to connect to R&D in, uh, in a very special way. And therefore, education and training is core uh, to, to focus these activities. Uh, and among them, uh, we want to, uh, the, main of the, the main of the work is developed by PhD level work. And therefore, it is natural to have this kind of synergy between us, and the academia, uh, the academic institutes, and also the industry partners who uh, do uh, work in, this, in quantum technologies. Uh, in such a way that we can promote uh, gradually also through the work of the young researchers or the junior researchers first, the future researchers of the activity later, uh, that we can uh, have this kind of promotion of, uh, of, of this work in, different, in the different pillars that we have in the Quantum Technology Initiative. Now, um, yeah, just to before giving the word to our uh, presenters, to our speakers, just to mention that we have the intention to record these events regularly. So those people who want to go back to the presentations or maybe uh, people who miss it and you know that who miss it that you can point them always to the recording. Uh, so these presentations will be recorded and whenever possible will be also webcasted, which is what, uh, the case today, for instance. Um, about the presentation material, it is up to the speakers. So we will, we will try to collect the slides if they are happy to, to share them. And therefore, you will find them always in the Indico pointer, that is the, the basis, uh, the, the reference for all the material that we want to showcase around each lecture. And uh, by the way, we also invite you, some of you uh, might be interested to participate yourselves, I mean, to contribute yourselves as, as speakers uh, to, to showcase, showcase your work. Uh, maybe uh, work that you are doing alone for your PhD, or maybe the work that you are doing in, within a team. And therefore, we encourage you to ask to also to, to join us and to participate, and you will have an Indico the coordinates on how to contact us. Um, I think that this is good enough. By now, we have uh, a good number of people that are already connected, so all this is, is just to give them time to connect and enjoy the real meat of this, uh, of this session, which is the presentation by Giovanni and Michele on the work that they are doing at Trieste. So uh, please uh, go ahead and let us enjoy together what you tell us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, now I share my screen. Sorry, I think I, I need to ask. We lost you. Oh, we... Yeah, oh, sorry, oh. Ah, Giovanni okay. was uh, because Zoom was asking for him to get uh, to share this. Oh, I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Good, okay. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate uh, to this uh, very nice, uh, um, very nice uh, um, series of lectures. Um, I'm Giovanni Di Bartolomeo and uh, I'm a, a PhD student um, uh, at the University of Trieste. 
Um, uh, me and my colleague here, uh, Michele, um, are working on the topic of uh, uh, noise uh, on, uh, in quantum computers. And uh, so today uh, we will talk about uh, um, a novel noisy gates approach for simulating uh, quantum computers. Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, okay, um, you, you know uh, that uh, a quantum algorithm is a, a collection of uh, quantum operation, uh, operations that are called quantum gates. And in, the, in this picture, you can see a, um, a simple example of a quantum algorithm. Um, and in an ideal world, um, uh, um, the, the quantum uh, operation uh, should uh, act uh, on the, on the qubits uh, perfectly uh, because uh, the qubits inside a quantum computer uh, should be uh, perfectly isolated from the surrounding environment. Uh, and so uh, we should be able to perform um, perfect uh, um, quantum operations on, uh, on qubits. But you know that in real life, uh, this is not the case because um, uh, qubits are subject to noise. Okay, but, but uh, what means that uh, uh, qubits are sub subject to noise? Uh, what kind of noises, uh, um, um, wh what kind of noises and what are the sources of, uh, of this noise? Uh, the, re uh, the main reason for the presence of noise is that uh, uh, the, um, in real life, uh, it is almost impossible to perfectly isolate the system, the quantum system, uh, from uh, the, his surrounding environment. And so there is a, uh, an interaction uh, between the system and the environment. This interaction is small, uh, but uh, if, we, if we want to perform uh, quantum algorithms with a high number of, uh, of qubits, uh, this kind of this kind of interaction interaction is uh, enough to uh, in such a way to destroy uh, the uh, the quantum properties of the system, um, and um, so the noise uh, um, um, uh, disturb our uh, computation. Um, you know that uh, in literature you can find uh, several techniques of quantum error correction. Uh, these kind of techniques are uh, similar to error, cor error correction schemes that already uh, are in, uh, that are already implemented in uh, classical co computers, for example. But uh, for quantum error correction, there is a problem because uh, in order to um, uh, cor in order to correct errors uh, um, uh, for uh, an high number of qubits, uh, we we need. Uh, uh, too many uh, further qubits, uh, and we we talk about uh, we can talk about millions of qubits, and so to date uh, um, the quantum devices have uh, uh, about uh, hundred of qubits. So um, to, today it is impossible to uh, perform a correct quantum error correction on uh, a high number of uh, qubits. And this means that we need to, to cohabit with the presence of noise. We, we have to live uh, 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 together with the, with the presence of noise in, uh, inside quantum computers. And so we can say that we are in an ISQ era, noise intermediate scale quantum era. Um, and so um, it is for this reason, uh, it is important uh, uh, to study the noise. Uh, what means study noise means that we need to develop a proper theoretical model of the dynamics of the noise. And it means that we need to understand uh, the effect of the environment on the quantum system. Uh, why? Because in this way we can, we can have a physical understanding of what are the sources of noise. And the final goal of this kind of studies is to uh, develop and suggest strategies to mitigate errors, because you know that if if we we develop a um, a precise um, theoretical model, uh, we can also uh, um, try to find uh, uh, techniques uh, uh, to mitigate errors. And uh, and moreover, uh, another goal 
uh, is to perform uh, accurate classical simulations of quantum uh, algorithms in order to uh, study the performances of quantum algorithms and also to predict how these performances scale uh, with a number of qubits or, or gates. Um, okay, uh, now uh, in, in order to, uh, to, to develop this kind of uh, uh, noise model, uh, we need to start from the theory of open quantum system systems because as i said the um, the problem uh, the noise the, the source of the noise is is the interaction between the quantum system and his uh, surrounding environment and so we need uh, the theory of open quantum systems uh, in this uh, in this theory uh, it's usual to, um, to represent the, uh, the the state of the system by using instead of the state vector um, that you you can uh, see on the left here is used the, the density matrix formalism because uh, um, we want we want to have um, a statistical description of the of the dynamics and then the density matrix uh, is also called the statistical operator um, so okay so the, the theory is, is based on this uh, representation uh, okay uh, now if we assume that uh, the the coupling between the system and the environment is small, uh, uh, we can use uh, this equation that you can see on the right. This, uh, this is, the, um, the, is the equation that describes uh, an open quantum system uh, in, uh, in contact, contact with an environment in the, in the, in the so-called Markovian uh, approximation. It means that uh, uh, the, the environment is uh, uh, small, uh, is big enough to um, uh, that uh, it can affect the system, but the system, the system can't affect uh, the, um, the, the environment. Um, and it means that uh, the, the coupling between system and environment is small. Okay, this equation is called uh, master equation uh, or also Lindblad equation. Uh, you can see that there are two, two terms. The first term is an Hamiltonian term um, and it, this term describes the unitary evolution of, for example, of a, a gate in a, in a quantum circuit. circuit. Uh, indeed, if you neglect the second term, the, the equation is exactly the Schrodinger equation for, uh, for the density matrix. But if, if you add uh, the second term, you can take in account the, the effect of the environment. Uh, the, parameter, uh, the parameters um, gamma of k okay are uh, um, the the couplings uh, um, the coupling constants uh, between the, the system and the environment and these operators uh, here l of k uh, are uh, called the, Lim the Limblad operators and uh, the form of uh, the the shape of these operators um, depends on what is the noise that I I would like to describe so um, if uh, so it depends on uh, um, what kind of sources of noise um, I have deal with. Okay, so this is our uh, our equation, but but there are uh, some issues to deal with because you can see that now the dynamics is more complicated with respect to the case of the Schrodinger equation, and so we need uh, uh, we need to find uh, a way to efficiently. Uh, uh, deal with this uh, kind of uh, evolution in, a, in order to use it in, in a simulation, for example. Um, another problem is that this equation in general, uh, in general, it is not possible to uh, solve analytically this equation. And another problem is that uh, if we use the density matrix formally, formally, the problem scales quadratically with the size of the system. Uh, but for uh, for um, in a computational uh, uh, way of thinking, uh, we we would like to work uh, with the, the state vector of the system, because in this way the problem uh, scales uh, linearly and not quadratically. So um, we can start from this uh, in order to, from these issues in order to to, to construct a um, a good uh, way to take in account uh, these dynamics. Okay, now I, I would like to talk about uh, um, first about uh, 
what is the standard uh, approach that you can find in literature in, in the literature uh, that uh, is used in order to uh, to uh, solve these issues and to describe uh, the noise in quantum uh, algorithms and then uh, i will talk about a different approach uh, that uh, we call uh, we call noisy gates approach that is basically based on other uh, kind of approximations okay um okay let's start about the standard noise model uh, in on the left uh, you can see uh, the ideal circuit and on the right uh, a noise, uh, uh, a noisy quantum circuit, uh, where you can see that the gates uh, are. Uh, you can see that there are the, the same gates of the ideal quantum circuit, but uh, before or after these gates, uh, there are some quantum channels that uh, describe the effects of the noise. Uh, we can call uh, these quantum channels noise gate, but not noisy gate. We call it noise gate because um, these channels describe only the effect of, uh, of the noise. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, if we look at uh, the, the Lindblad equation, the idea is uh, to totally decouple the, the two kinds of evolution, the unitary evolution uh, and uh, the, the non-unitary evolution. Um, because uh, uh, we, we can assume that the, the coupling between the, the system and environment are, are, are small enough to, um, to assume that during the evolution of the gates, so the unitary dynamics, the, the noise dynamics is uh, almost free. Uh, and so we can decouple the two, um, the two, uh, the two evolution. So we can solve, um, we can, solve the uh, the unitary evolution uh, and then we can solve the noise evolution okay and so uh, the the final result is a, is a, a quantum algorithm of this uh, type here um, so this this uh, this is the standard noise simulation that you can find also in uh, um, uh, for example IBM Qiskit simulator or uh, Rigetti simulator in general uh, this is the, the the most famous uh, approach. And as I said, the gates and the noise are formally decoupled because the time scales are small. For example, uh, for IBM uh, devices, uh, the gate time is, um, ten, uh, is um, of the order of 10 to minus eight seconds and the degree and time is of the order of 10 to minus four seconds. Um, okay, so in this way, uh, this is a way in which we can, uh, um, we can simulate um, a quantum uh, uh, noisy algorithm. Um, and uh, there is also uh, the possibility to work with the state vector of the system instead of the density matrix. Um, and we can do this by using the quantum jump-like approach. Uh, we will talk more, more deeply about this kind of approach in the next slides, but uh, I can say now that uh, uh, this approach is, is a stochastic approach because, for example, I have a, a probability to apply or not apply a, a noise gate before or after a, a gate. Uh, and so uh, I can perform uh, more realization of the noise. So I can perform uh, different uh, uh, realization of a noise cir noisy circuit and then I can, um, I can take the average over these different realizations in order to get the final result. But we will, we will in the next slide, we will uh, uh, see more, more deeply this kind of, a, of a, a quantum jump-like approach. Okay, so this is in general the, the standard noise model. Uh, and now I would like to talk about uh, a, lit, a different uh, approach that we call uh, this, uh, this time noisy gates approach because uh, the idea is to uh, the idea is that the noises are embedded in the gate it means that now we we don't want to decouple to totally decouple the the, um, the unitary evolution uh, due, uh, due, due to the gates and the noisy evolution we would like to to uh, treat uh, these two kind of evolution uh, at the same time because uh, in uh, 
in the real life, uh, the noise act at the same time with the, with the gate. Um, so um, our, uh, our guess is that uh, uh, the fact that the coupling be between the system and the environment is small, is small is, it is not enough to totally decouple the two evolution. So this is our uh, guess. And uh, now uh, we see that uh, also in this kind, in this approach, uh, by using this approach, we can use, uh, we can work with the state vector uh, uh, formalism. And it's uh, good, it's, uh, it's good in order to have a, a good uh, simulation at the computational level. Okay, uh, so in order to, to, to construct this uh, noisy quantum gates approach, we can, we can start from the, the Limblad equation that you, you saw before. And now uh, you can notice that it is possible to write a stochastic differential equation that you can see here uh, on the bottom. Um, this is a stochastic differential equation for the state vector of the system. And this equation is uh, uh, formal, uh, is, uh, um, there is a formal statistical equivalence uh, between this, uh, this stochastic differential equation and the Limblad equation. It means that uh, the final result uh, uh, are the same because I can solve this stochastic differential equation uh, several times. And uh, at the end, I can take the average over different realizations of the noise and the results uh, are exactly the same that uh, I, um, I could uh, uh, get by using directly the, the density matrix uh, uh, approach. Okay, uh, you, you can see that uh, in this equation, the first term is exactly the Schrodinger equation for the state vector uh, of the system. And the second term is, uh, is the term that take into uh, takes into account uh, um, the noise evolution. And you can notice that there is a stochastic, uh, um, a stochastic uh, term inside because there is this, uh, uh, this W um, variable that uh, is a, um, a stochastic uh, process in particular, in particular is a Gaussian white uh, stochastic process. Um, okay, so um, this is the equation that, that uh, now we, uh, we want to, to solve uh, in order to obtain a noisy gate. Uh, an important, uh, uh, a very important uh, uh, feature of this uh, equation is that uh, you can see that the equation is linear um, and it, it means that uh, also the dynamics is linear. Uh, and uh, so it means that we can represent the, the results uh, as a, an operator that act on the initial state. So uh, as a matrix that uh, um, act acts on the initial state, as you can see here. But now the difference is that uh, uh, both the, the gate evolution and the noise evolution are uh, uh, embedded in the, in, the same, uh, uh, in the same stochastic uh, matrix. Uh, now, due to the, to the presence of noises inside, the, inside the, this matrix, because this, in this matrix, there are um, stochastic uh, processes, as I said. Due to this uh, stochastic process, the gate in general is not unitary and is not not preserving. But uh, uh, this is not a problem because, uh, as I said, there is a, a statistical uh, there is a statistical equivalence between this stochastic equation and the Lindblad equation. And so, at the end, uh, the final the final probabilities that I can uh, uh, get. Uh, uh, from my quantum matrix are, uh, are okay. The trace of the density matrix is preserved. And so one finally recovers the standard uh, Limblad behavior. Uh, okay, now uh, um, ah, um, this, uh, this stochastic differential equation in general, in general, it is not possible to solve this equation uh, analytically, but uh, there exists a um, very simple uh, a per, um, perturbative method in order to solve this equation. And so we, uh, we solved 
uh, this equation in general um, at the second order in the in the noise parameters and so uh, we got the, the the following results so this is the expression uh, here for um a general noisy gate uh, you can see that there are three uh, three terms the first uh, u of g is a noise is uh, the noiseless gate um, uh, here um, here has uh, is uh, the the time variable and it it goes from zero to one because uh, uh, we work in the uh, in time in gate time unity so this is the only reason for which the the time goes from zero to one okay okay so the 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 gate uh, sorry the matrix u of g is uh, the noiseless gate and then there are these two further terms the first uh, exponential is a deterministic contribution uh, of the noise toward their uh, um, epsilon uh, square where epsilon is the parameter of noise uh, and you can see that, uh, from uh, the expression of l that uh, we, we have a deterministic integral here um, okay and the second term uh, this second exponential instead is a stochastic contribution of the noise uh, and now you can see that uh, that uh, there is here a, a stochastic uh, eto integral uh, the stochastic eto integral uh, can be can be treated as a um, um, a stochastic process with a, a mean zero and uh, a gaussian sorry a gaussian stochastic process with mean zero and a, a certain uh, um, a certain variance that we ca we can uh, we are able to to compute so uh, this integral can be simply uh, sampled from a gaussian distribution so it is also simple to to sample uh, this uh, this kind of processes okay and and now i stress that uh, if you look at the um, at this form for the noisy gate it it seems that uh, uh, the 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 two dynamics are uh, still decoupled but uh, it is not the case because uh, you can see that these operators l of, of k of s the limit operators now are expressed in the interaction picture so these operators now depend uh, depend on the gate u of g so on the parameters of the gate u of g it means that so now the two the two dynamics are not uh, decoupled uh, and so the 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 action of the gate can uh, affect the the noise so uh, can affect the strength of noise and so it, um, we will see that this kind of approach uh, is more precise with respect to the to the um, to the the standard approach that we saw before uh, that uh, totally decoupled the the, the two the two uh, kind of uh, dynamics Okay, and now I I finish my part of the lecture by uh, by doing a comparison uh, between the, these two up, these two approximations, the standard approximation and the noisy gates approximation, by uh, by taking a look at uh, um, at, at, at the the, the, ma the math of uh, the uh, the master equation. Um, so. Uh, you can see here this is uh, the Limblad equation, uh, but now for simplicity uh, uh, we we wrote this only with one uh, one uh, Limblad operator. Okay, now uh, we, we would like to to write this equation. Uh, uh, sorry, we would like to write the formal solution of this uh, of this equation. Um, as I said before. Uh, it is not possible to, in general, not possible to solve this equation uh, analytically, but uh, now I, I talk about a, uh, a formal solution of, the, of this equation. Um, so I can, I can uh, pass in the interaction picture, uh, and then I can solve formally the equation interaction picture, where and I, can, I get uh, uh, this expression on the right. Here, the... Uh, the operator t is uh, um, is the time ordered operator, and this is the reason for I I'm talking about a formal solution. 
Uh, and so uh, then I can uh, go back to the, the Schrodinger equation and fi uh, finally I find the following uh, formal solution of the full Limblad equation. Okay, now uh, I show you how we can uh, derive the standard approach, uh, uh, sorry, the standard approach from this equation or the noisy gate approach. And this way we can uh, uh, understand better the difference of this uh, of the of the approximations that we we do okay so um, in the case of standard approximation we start from the formal solution of, of the limbal equation and now the idea is to, um, to to use the fact that the gamma here parameter is, is small and to assume that uh, the um, during the gate evolution the noise is almost freezed and uh, at, at this level, it means that I can do this approximation. Um, so it, it means that uh, now I assume that uh, the, the Limblad super operator L uh, does not depend on time. And so if I, I, I sub, uh, substitute this inside the, the, um, the equation, finally I find, I find the, the formulas inside the, this uh, red square. And you can see that uh, uh, is uh, is clear that now the, the the dynamics are decoupled because in in uh, the term inside this is actually uh, uh, describe exactly the evolution of the noise uh, and uh, this uh, evolution is uh, composed with a unitary uh, unitary channel um, that uh, describe the the, no the the gate evolution. On the other hand, uh, if uh, for uh, in the case of noisy gates approximation, you can see that uh, the the kind of approximation is different because now from the formal uh, solution of the uh, density of the master equation, now we want to do a second or a first order um, expansion of the time order operator here, and so we find uh, the following result. And, and finally, so the our uh, final density matrix is, is the following. And now we, you can notice that uh, there are uh, there are uh, uh, two cha uh, channels, quantum channels that are composed. But uh, now the noise channel depends on the big, uh, depends on the gate evolution because uh, this uh, L operator is in, uh, is an interaction picture. Okay, so uh, you can see uh, in a clear way the what are the two different uh, um, approximation. Okay, uh, I have finished my my part of the lecture, and uh, now um, my colleague Michele will will, uh, will talk about how we have um, um, developed uh, this. Um, uh, this noisy gate approach uh, by studying the IBM uh, devices uh, and how we we um, we proved that this uh, uh, that this uh, kind of approach is uh, has a better uh, uh, description uh, of uh, of the noise in a quantum uh, circuit. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Giovanni. And while uh, Michele is sharing his screen, I just wanted to remind also everyone, since there is an opportunity to ask questions to our speakers. As Michele mentioned before, we are going to have a Q&A session in of the presentation. But if you have any immediate questions or if questions you're afraid to forget, you can also always paste them in the chat here and we will take them in the same order as is asked. Thank you. Michele, over to you. Sorry, one minute. Yeah, just a... Sorry. Okay. Sorry, but uh, my sorry. Zoom is not... Uh... A second. Yes. 
Okay. Okay, sorry, I will use Giovanni's screen because my no problem. Take your time, it's all good. It's not allowed to share the screen. Okay, so I share back the screen. Okay. Okay, so hello to everyone. I'm uh, Michele. Uh, thanks to all the organizers for the invitation and the nice organization of these lectures. And now, as Giovanni said, I want uh, to follow up his nice presentation with some further details and uh, some of the interesting results that we got. So before starting, let me just quickly recap what we got so far. We were able to solve this uh, stochastic Schrodinger, Schrodinger equation in order to get the expression for the noisy gate that involves the noiseless gate and this uh, contribution due to the noise. Now it is clear uh, right now that uh, this approach is general, but if we want to make it work somehow, some way, we need to specify what are the Hamiltonians or the unitary evolution of the system and the noise inside the device. So we need to really focus on a specific hardware implementation. And what we decided to do is uh, to focus on IBM superconducting devices. This is, uh, has two reasons. One is that uh, noises are well characterized in such kind of devices. And the second is that they are also easily accessible through the cloud. So what are the main sources of errors inside the IBM devices. One source of errors is the so-called depolarization channel that drives the system towards the maximally mixed state. And the other main source is what we will call relaxation channel, which is just a combination of the amplitude damping, which takes the initial state to the ground state, and the phase damping channel, which kills the off-diagonal elements of the density matrix. Now, as already said by Giovanni, we want to stress again that we are in the regime over which the coefficients of the noise, so the frequency or the time scales of the noise, are much, much slower than the time scales that is needed in order to implement the gate. So we can assume that we can stay in this perturbative regime where we can solve the stochastic Schrodinger equation. Now, uh, what we can do is take these two types of uh, noise channels and combine them in order to uh, uh, express them in the so-called canonical form that minimizes and reduces at the minimum the number of Limbad operator. Uh, now, the next piece in order to make uh, the model work are the Hamiltonians. So in IBM superconducting devices, we have a native gate set so a set of gate that is composed by single qubit rotation. And these are the rotation around the z-axis of some angle phi, and then two rotations around the x-axis of fixed angle, one of angle pi that realizes a full x rotation, and the other one uh, of angle pi half that realizes the half of this rotation. So Sx stands for square root of x. And then in order to make this set of gates universal, we need uh, an entangling gate. And in this case, for the IBM devices, this entangling gate is the C0. But uh, uh, what we have to do is to find really what are the Hamiltonians that implement these types of gates. So for the single qubit gates, the Hamiltonian is the one in the box, blue box on the left that depends on two parameters, theta and phi, where theta is the angle of rotation, while phi dictates uh, which is the axis of rotation, let's say, because you can see the, that r, x, y, phi depends on phi, and depending on the value of phi, uh, defines the axis of rotation that belongs always to the x, y plane. So for example, if I have phi equal to zero, then I can realize a rotation of angle theta around the x-axis, or phi equal pi half, then I realize rotation around the y-axis, and so on. Now, thanks to this additional phase phi, I 
I don't have time to go into the details here, but basically, thanks to this additional phase, it is possible to realize the Z rotations as virtual gates, meaning that it is not needed to send any pass to act with any physical action on the device in order to implement the virtual Z gate. So these single qubit gates are realized by adjusting the phase inside this Hamiltonian, and then we can get all the single qubit rotation. Now, what happens instead for the two qubit gate is that what is really true at the level of Hamiltonian is that the C0 is not really the native gate inside these devices. What is native is an interaction which is called cross resonance or what we will call cross resonance gate that again depends on the parameter theta that defines the angle of rotation and the parameter phi, which has the same meaning as for the single qubit gate. Now, this Hamiltonian has a form which is just a Z operator on one qubit times the single qubit Hamiltonian on the second qubit. So with this and with the uh, red box where we have all the types of noise, we can combine them in this uh, expression that you saw above and find the expressions for these uh, uh, native gates of IBM. So we have our noisy uh, gates. Now, of course, we want to implement this uh, to perform classical simulations. And what we want to do is now see if we are able to um, get better results with respect to the standard methods that are implemented in other simulators, for example, as Giovanni was saying to you before in the Kiski simulator. So before doing this, so before showing the results, uh, I want to go a bit deeper uh, into how uh, the uh, into how we can implement at the algorithmic level both the standard method and the noisy gates method and both working at the level of state vector. So what happens uh, for the standard method is, uh, is that as Giovanni said, when we have a unitary gate, then after this gate, we should apply a noisy operation. So in order to do so, the standard method uses exploits, the formalism of uh, Krauss maps that are quantum channels that takes in input some density matrix and gives in output another density matrix that is modified by the noise uh, because of this uh, Ki, which are called Krauss operators. The condition uh, on these Krauss operators is a normalization condition that is, that is the sum over i of Ki dagger. Ki is equal to the identity. And this means that this channel uh, gives as an output a good density matrix, let's say. So the trace is preserved and is completely positive. So now, in the same manner as we did for the Limblad equation, for which we unravel it to a description at the level of state vector, but stochastic description, one can, on the same manner, let's say, unravel this Krauss map at the level of state vectors. How, how can you do so? Uh, you can do so by defining this set of probabilities, Pj, which are just computed by applying the Krauss operator on the state of the system and computing the norm of this state. Now, because of the normalization condition of the Krauss operators, this defines a well-defined well probability distribution that we can sample in order to get one of the Krauss operators to apply to the state. Then on the next realization, we sample again the probability distribution. We get another Krauss operators. We apply to the state. And then if we repeat this multiple times, we get the same prediction of the Krauss map. So this is what allows to perform the state vector noisy simulation with the standard method. And this is what is implemented, for example, in Keyskit. So again, to... Uh, express this even better, uh, we uh, can say, sorry, I hear some question maybe. Okay. Okay, I will go on. So in order to highlight the differences uh, of our approach then with respect to the standard approach, we uh, are showing here the pseudo algorithm for these two approaches. 
So for the Kiski simulation, we can start with an initial state. We have a noiseless circuit that is composed by a sequence of unitaries. And then we have a number of samples. Now for each sample, what we should do is apply the unitary UI to update the state. Then when we have this psi k of i, uh, after we apply the unitary, we take the state, we compute the probabilities. When we have the probabilities, we can sample the Krauss operator. Once we have this Krauss operator, we applied to the state to update the state. And we repeat this procedure up to the final gate U of NG. After this, we can get the pseudo density matrix by computing this quantity here. And if we repeat this for each number of samples, we can collect the results and take the average to get the output. Now, what is different in our approach is that we can start with, initial, with the same setup. We have an initial state, a noiseless circuit, and a number of samples. Now, what we just need to do is given the noiseless circuit, we can map this circuit to the noisy version. So each gate is substituted with the noisy gates version. We can sample the stochastic processes inside the noisy gate and apply to the state. So what you may notice is that while we do this for every number of samples, we do not, know, we do not need to compute this scalar product here in order to compute the probabilities. So we just need to apply matrices on the initial state. And then on the same way that the Kiski simulation, one can collect all the density matrix for pseudo density matrix, let's say, for each realization, and then um, take the mean and get the output. Now, of course, um, as we said, uh, we, we developed this uh, scheme in order to be more precise in reproducing at least the Lindblad equation. So a first check that one should do is, are we really able to reproduce with better accuracy or precision the results of the Lindblad equation? So to do so, uh, we decided to focus on uh, the native gate set where we um, applied a sequence of X gate on an initial state under the presence of the polarizing and relaxation noise channel that I explained to you before. Now, what is the target that we want to compare with? The target is the Limbad equation. So, of course, the Limbad equation in this case is not uh, solvable analytically, but we can solve this equation numerically. For example, we solve this equation with Mathematica, get a result, and this will be our target result because we can say that, okay, now, the system of differential equation that uh, comes out of the Limbad equation is not too complicated. We have, we have a small set of differential equation and the approximation done by the uh, numerical solver is so small that we can say, okay, the, the numerical solution of the Limbad equation is the analytic solution and is the target uh, over which we want to compare our results. So now the the dynamics that we choose to, to reproduce is the following. We have a sequence of X gate over time. So at each gate time, we realize an X gate. We start from the initial state zero and we apply the X gate. Then in the ideal case, we should flip to the one state, to the excited state. Then again, another X gate and we should flip back to the zero state. So in the ideal case, the plot of the probability of being in the ground state, for example, which is this quantity here, should flip between one and zero back and forth. Now you see that if we solve the equation numerically with the presence of noise, these oscillations are damped over time and we reach an asymptotic, asymptotic value of, for the probability of one half, meaning that we are going to the maximally mixed state. Notice uh, moreover that with uh, vertical dashed lines, we are representing the time scales of the noise. So the time scales after which uh, the quantum state of the system might not be anymore a reliable quantum state because the noise is too strong and spoils completely the quantumness of the state. 
Now, on the right panels, uh, we are showing the, uh, the same uh, dynamics, but reproduced thanks to the stochastic de description with the noisy gate, averaging over 1,000 realizations. And also, we did the same with the Kiskis simulator, with this method that I was explaining to you before. So now you can see that for this simple X sequence of X gate, it's not really easy, at least at this qualitative level, to see which of the two uh, which of the two uh, plots is better in reproducing the orange plot. But if we consider the same setup, but with a slightly more complicated dynamics, where we consider the application of a sequence of cross resonance gate, where now the gate is acting on more qubits, so two qubits. And again, we choose an angle for the cross resonance gate such that, again, in the ideal case, if we start in the one zero state, we should flip ideally between one zero and one one. So this probability of being in the one zero state should flip between one and zero back and forth again. But now, as before, because of the noise, the analytic behavior of the Limbrad equation shows uh, damped oscillations and the uh, asymptotic state is the maximally mixed state again. And vertical dashed lines have the same meaning as before. Now you may notice that now, uh, if we do the same uh, plots as we did before for the sequences of uh, X gates, you may notice that now uh, the uh, noisy gate, at least it can be seen a bit that over the regime in which we are uh, on times smaller than the times over which the state is not anymore a reliable quantum state, so before these gray dashed lines, it seems that our method is reproducing better uh, the Limbaud equation. And we can be uh, indeed more quantitative because what we did is uh, basically uh, compute the so-called Hellinger distance between the probability distribution. So we have the probability distributions that are output of the Limbrad equation and the noisy gates or the Kiski simulator. And we can compare and we can calculate this Hellinger distance, which the smaller it is, the better uh, the accuracy is with respect to the Limbrad equation and the noisy gates, which are here depicted in blue, and the Limbaud equation and the Kiskis simulator. And you, and you notice here that, on, for example, on the left panels, we are showing the Hellinger distance as the time is increasing here for uh, 100 independent experiments, each experiment consisting of taking the mean over 1,000 realization. Now, if now, we take the mean over all these trajectories and their standard deviation, we get the plot on the right. And you can see that, for example, for the single qubit, we already have an improvement in the Hellinger distance. Still, the two results are kind of compatible between error bars, but we also have better, uh, smaller standard deviation here. But as I said, already, in already complicating a little bit more the dynamics by considering the two qubit gate, then we see that uh, the Hellinger distance now is not any more compatible between error bars. And we have also smaller standard deviation. So our results is really performing, our method is really performing better already at this level. And I think this is already a good result, but uh, you might say, okay, in this way, we show that our expectations that, okay, we are able, we developed a method in, that can reproduce better the Limbaud equation, then, okay, this expectation is true. But in the end, if we want a simulator of noise, we want to compare our result, not to the analytic solution of the Limbaud equation, which is just a model of how noise is uh, act on the quantum computer, but we want to compare with the real quantum computer. And this is indeed uh, what we did as the next step. So uh, we consider um, the uh, so-called inverse quantum Fourier transform algorithm. 
why we we choose this algorithm well uh, we it has, we have uh, more than one reason to do this so the first uh, is that when we have the um, form of the quantum Fourier transform inverse quantum Fourier transform algorithm for a specific number of qubit it's easy to extend this algorithm to a higher number of qubits so we can test the uh, performances of the noise models as the number of qubits increases. And the second important reason is that we wanted an algorithm for which uh, the resulting ideal probability distribution is really well picked on one value. So for example, you can see here, so if we start with all the zero state and we apply a layer of Adamar gates, as in the picture above here, then we go, we go into the equal superposition state. Now we know that if we apply the quantum Fourier inverse quantum Fourier transform on this state, we should get back to the state in which all the qubits are zero. So the, the ideal probability distribution is really well picked in this value of all the qubits being in zero. And in this way, why we choose this? Because in this way, we can distinguish, let's say, what are the effects of the noises? Because, for example, if I do the opposite, if I start with the zero state and apply the quantum Fourier transform, then I should go to the, uh, to the um, equal superposition state. And for the equal superposition state, I have a flat probability distribution, but the, I would obtain the same distribution under the action of noises because um, the noise tends to uh, drive the system towards the maximally mixed state which you cannot distinguish out from the equal superposition state at the level of probability distribution so that's why we wanted a really well picked uh, probability distribution and then what we did is define the inverse qft algorithm uh, with the general gates transpile it into the set of native gates that uh, I was showing to you before. And then we run the algorithm first on the real device. And we run the algorithm for from 2 to 18 qubits. And then we perform the simulations with the noisy gates and with the Kiski simulator. And again, we, did, we perform 100 experiments like for each number of qubits, we perform 100 independent, independent experiments, each including 1,000 uh, run, uh, 1,000 samples. And of course, we did this by defining a um, custom noise model in Qiskit so that this noise model and our noise model are the same. So the noise model consists of a depolarization and relaxation um, channel during in our method or after the gates in IBM Kiski simulator. Then we added relaxation on idle qubits and then a bit flip error before measurements. And now what is really interesting here is that if we compute the Hellinger distance, uh, then we see that the noisy gate simulation is getting better Hellinger distance with respect to the Kiski simulator, also in reproducing the actual hardware. So, our expectations are correct, but of course, you might notice that as the number of qubit increases, both methods uh, are not really good in reproducing the, the actual quantum device because the Hellinger distance is going to one. So this means that, okay, we are able to do better, but uh, maybe this simple noise model is not enough to capture all the dynamics, the noisy dynamics of the real quantum computer. Um, with this, uh, let me also sponsor a bit, uh, and we are really proud of this uh, because recently we were able to make our simulator um, and make it public as a Python package that you all can install by the command pip install quantum gates. So I think uh, this is really a useful tool that you can use. And for example, you can 
download it and run your own noisy simulation. So if you are interested in the effects of noises on a specific algorithm of your choice, then it's also easy to use it. You can, for example, define the algorithm you are interested in with Qiskit. And then by defining an instance of this Mr. Anderson simulator that takes care of simulating the noise with the noisy gates, you can get the resulting probability distribution and see the effects of the noise. Now, of course, uh, we are uh, working on a number of uh, improvements to this simulator, because as I said, okay, first improvement might be to consider other qubit platforms, because we focused only on IBM superconducting platforms, but the method is completely general. Once the Hamiltonians and the Limlad operators are found, you can uh, define the noisy gates for other platforms. Then you can consider more complicated types of noise that might uh, made the method even more accurate, like for example, adding correlated two qubit errors or crosstalk errors. Then we, can, we are also working on generalizing the model to non-Markovian dynamics. And last, uh, uh, we have also in mind to, uh, let's say, not only have uh, the feature of um, analyzing the performances of uh, the performances of an algorithm under the influence of noise, but also acting on this noise, maybe uh, mitigating this effect of the noise. And this we can do because now we have a model in which the shape of the pulse, the shape of the Hamiltonians, influences the form of the noise. So we can optimize the shape of the pulse in order to reduce the effect of the noise. Uh, finally, uh, let me thank all uh, people in the team and all the collaborators and also the help of the IQT, the Quantum Technology Initiative, that so we uh, all work together at this really, really nice project. And uh, so with this, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, we are ready to take your questions if you have any. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, many thanks. And well, we cannot offer you the clapping uh, with sound, but I am sure that we can offer you the clapping with the with the icons. Uh, thanks a lot for your for your work in and for your endeavor in, in making this presentation possible. So now um, I, I already see. Oh, I see the clapping. <laughs> Um, my proposal is there were no questions in the chatting. Yes, okay. I see. So, um, I mean, anybody who is first, first uh, can first serve, can you raise your hand so we can just give you the, can pass you the word? Comments, questions? But I, I don't see, I mean, I apologize if I don't see uh, somebody, but I don't see any. Do you see Anastasia, somebody? Mr. Monitorian, I, I don't see any questions. I think it means this presentation was super clear and, and, uh, and great, uh, which is fine. <laughs> um, I also so. taken on social media, I don't see any questions. Uh, but of course, if at the later point any of, any of you have this question, uh, we can also um, forward them uh, yeah. and uh, get back to you. Absolutely. So um, that we propose you that. I mean, if you would like to, I mean, if you, and as, as an afterthought, you have questions to post to the to the team, to to, to the whole team, not only to Giovanni and to Michele. Uh, please send them to us, and we will forward them. No problem. We, with pleasure. Uh, other than that, just uh, let me remind. You, I think that then we can we call it uh, we call it the end. But let me remind you before that. We have our next presentation will be in two weeks time on the 15th and uh, the, the, the whole program is actually in the link that I have sent you, but I, I can spell it. It's, it is easy to remember is cern.ch slash go, uh, the, to, the, 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 the verb go, slash QTI lectures. So if you use this link, you will be able to find everything that we have uh, scheduled so far. And again, if any of you, of the people who are listening today, would be interested in joining this effort, in participating, in showcasing your work, 
the work of yourself or also of your team or on behalf of your team, uh, feel welcome to contact us. The address is in the Indico events, but uh, we can spell it also. It's easy to, to spell quantum dash edu at cern.ch. If you just uh, mail us to this address, that we can take into account and try to put you into the into the arrange uh, some slots for you in the schedule. We are we are pretty taken by uh, until after Easter, so the idea would be the end of April, May uh, onward. Uh, Anastasia, you wanted to say something. Yes, I just wanted to echo what, what you said and uh, mentioned that I also put uh, the e-group in the chat, the name of the e-groups that you can write oh, us to, to, um, to ask questions. And also I put a link to the Indico um, page where, where all the upcoming events are listed and also the past events are listed. So you can check it out and uh, see the presentation materials and the recordings once they are available. And of course, we will also make the recordings available on the Quantum website. So be sure to check it out. And um, also our social media channels, Twitter and LinkedIn, make sure you follow CKTI or, um, there because we regularly post um, updates about the quantum technology initiative. And we will also link in to the recording of this talk on our social media. Uh, so make sure you follow us there and check the website as well for the updates. So with this, thank you very much for everybody for joining us today. And we look forward to see you again in two weeks. Thank Thanks you. A lot. Great talk. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mikhail.